right, what's up, everybody? This is Leo Ray's Rayon. I'm Josh Glaze Glazer. And this is the Raising Glaze podcast. Today, we're going to continue our NFL draft preview. We're going to keep it going with the NFC South. Today, we are doing Josh's favorite team, Josh's hometown team, the New Orleans Saints. Uh, the Saints finished 13-3 and last year. They won their division, and then they got kicked out of the playoffs by uh, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> For that man. Anyway. I, I hate uh, to be you, Leo. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, just an all-around good team, good, solid offensive line, uh, solid running backs, the best receiver in the NFL. I can say that now that DeAndre Hopkins is gone. <laughs> Mike you can Thomas, finally admit it. <laughs> Mike Thomas is the best receiver in the league. Uh, yeah, on the defensive side, we all know they have a, a good front seven grade against the run. Um, I know you think that they need another like another cover linebacker, you would say. And, uh, yeah, you could go take it over for there. Yeah. yeah, they have picks uh, 24 and 88 in the top 100. Right which kind of limits their options, but they've done a good job of targeting players the last couple of years. Last year they targeted uh, Eric McCoy at center after Unger retired, and he's been a stud for them. I mean, just straight starter from day one. And Chauncey Gordon-Johnson they targeted in the fourth. They traded back up. Mm-hmm. They got him, and he's been a real difference maker. And he was the one that was able to make uh, Von Bell – uh, able to be a lick go and not have to overpay him right. as long as also with uh, bringing Malcolm Jenkins back. But you still want to have a young guy that you see as a future piece when you're giving up a young guy that you've drafted and developed mm-hmm. in Von Bell. Right. But in terms of uh, immediate needs, there's not too many. One immediate need just based on their health, like you were saying, and their ability to stay healthy. Demary Davis has stayed healthy. He's an all-pro linebacker was graded out in terms of PFF, the best linebacker in the NFL last year. Off-ball linebacker, obviously. Um, but they also have two dudes with them, uh, and Alex Anzalone and uh, Kiko Alonso, who both kind of suffer from the same thing. Both flash high-level potential and really and, and really played well when they play, but they neither have been able to stay healthy. I see them targeting two guys to be very precise and maybe trading up for a, a Patrick Queen or a Kenneth Murray mm-hmm. and kind of getting their their own version of a Bobby Wagner or some kind of guy that can eventually step in and take over for Damari Davis in a few years once he gets to a certain age. Because linebackers are very – they seem to, to be going – they go, go, go at a certain level and eventually they just kind of drop off the face of the earth because it's it's such a physically demanding uh, position. So, uh, But I think if those two guys aren't there, they'll turn their attention to another position where they'll look for a future starter and, and a guy that can contribute now in um, at cornerback. Right. And a couple of guys that I've, I've heard floated around in terms of needs for there. And, this, and these needs are also coming directly from the coach. He had a couple a week ago. He had a, a press conference where he talked about kind of uh, what their needs were. And he's been pretty straightforward with it. Uh, some coaches will kind of beat around the bush and won't talk about it as much. Much, but he spoke about adding depth and adding young guys at positions where there's older players. Um, and some of those some of those people at corner I see are Christian Fulton from LSU. Right. which would be pretty cool. Uh, Jeff Gladney from uh, TCU and a uh, Bryce Hall, who I know you like a lot, yeah. out of Virginia. And all those guys really have that flexibility and kind of that stereotype player that they look for, prototype, not stereotype, prototype player in terms of a Marshawn Lattimore, where they have elite speed, and maybe not elite, but sub- substantial speed and quickness that they can both play inside, outside, and also have the size to match up to all the rather the – the big receivers that are in um, the NFC South, whether it be Tampa with uh, Mike and uh, Chris Godwin or in uh, the Falcons with uh, Julio. Mm -hmm. So it'll be – those are probably the two positions they'll focus on. There's always the chance that Sean falls in love with the quarterback and he said – and like guy like Jordan Love drops. But I just don't see that happening with how they're going kind of all in. Um 
the before before signing uh, Emmanuel Sanders, receiver was an option. Now a receiver can still be an option down the road, and there'll probably be a pick for a receiver late in the draft due to the depth in this draft. But I think a position before that, due to an expiring contract next year of Larry Warford, the starting right guard, is that they would target an interior lineman sure. that could eventually move over and start for him. Because sure. I think by giving Andres Pete the money they did, and I know a lot of Saints fans and certain people didn't like it because of his PFF grade or whatever, but if you look at peak of the peak of what Andres Pete has done two years ago, he was – he was an elite left guard. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, he's kind of been banged up and just hasn't been the same. But there has been flashes where he's kind of still exhibited some of those the ability to bully defenses. Mm -hmm. He just had a really bad playoff game. And I think the Saints kind of have deserved the benefit of the doubt in terms of offensive linemen. When you look at guys that they've drafted and evaluated in terms of Eric Monroe, Teron Armstead, Ryan Ramchek, Larry Warford's been solid. I think they can, but they, I think they see more of an easier upgrade from Warford than Pete due to Pete's ability to move out the left tackle when inevitably uh, Teron Armstead gets hurt. Right. Um, some of those interior offensive linemen I see are two guys Lloyd Cushenberry from LSU. He's not as much of a mauler and he's not as physically strong, but I think he can add that. He's more of a this is more technical terms, but he's more of a catcher. He's, he's, he catches guys with his long arms and kind of just, just play, messes with them that way and doesn't really uh, send them backwards. Um, there's also Ruiz from Michigan, who's, who's a bigger guy, but he's played more center. So it'll be interesting where they, if they go there, and I'm sure they'll go there later in the draft at least. But who knows? Sean may fall in love with someone and say, all right, this is who we're going up, and we're going to trade up a future pick. And he's not been shy about trading up. He pretty much always trades up, never trades down. This may be a year where they trade down due to only having five picks, but we'll see. Um, when you look down at receiver, guys that they could target, um, I would always look at a guy in between the size of 6'1", 6'2", with right. big, strong hands, and a decent route runner, or at least the tools to become a decent route runner. So a guy like Michael Pittman, a guy like Denzel Mims, those kind of guys. Yeah. Maybe if he's a guy like that's there in the second round, Sean can't help himself, and he decides to go and get him. Or if they fall in love with another weapon like tight end Cole Komet, who's uh, one of the more uh, distinguished uh, tight ends in this class. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see which way they go. He's also mentioned, interestingly, and it made a point to say this was he's focusing on the kicking game. And when you, when you hear kicking game, you think, oh, you usually think returner. You usually think kicker, punter. But in this team, in this term, in, in this situation, sorry, there seems to be more of a need in terms of the cover guys. Like, so that's something you could get later and maybe undraft the free agency. Or they would use a later round pick on them just so they wouldn't have to outbid other teams and undraft it. Um, I see a real focus in this draft about, in terms of uh, focusing on uh, a concept of impactful depth and best player available. It's they have to look ahead because they have so many young guys that they need to pay in the next couple of years between Kamara, Lattimore, Ramchek, uh, Rankins. Uh, just there's, there's guys and guys and guys everywhere because that's what happens when you draft. Well, you eventually have to pay them. And that's what usually breaks up these teams. But so far, the Saints have done a good job of only losing Von Bell in terms of guys they drafted. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's kind of where I see it. I have them going 13-3, and 12-4, and four, probably 12-4. and four. It's hard to go 13-3 and three for three straight years. But, hey, I said it was hard to do 13-3, and 13-3 and three, twice in a row. So, it really – only thing that matters is with, what – Picks do they need to do that will put them in position to make a Super Bowl run? Because that's all that matters when you have a quarterback like Drew Brees. Right. What are your thoughts? What do you have them going record wise? Record wise, I think I, I'm gonna say 11 and five. I'm gonna say because because I know like I know you think Atlanta sucks, but I feel like Atlanta. Oh no, like, they always steal. They always steal at least one right. game. Like yeah. I, I mean, who knows? Like I mean, shit. Like you know, 
two years ago they were in the Super Bowl, right? Was that two years ago or three years ago? Recently they were in the Super Bowl. I know a lot of things changed, but, I mean, who knows? Like, if they get hot, you know, that shit could be really fucking annoying for everybody in y'all's division. But, you know, you have Tom Brady coming in. I'm going to just say 11-5, and five, but I do think that they can honestly get hot and, and right. In terms of the Falcons, just – you got to remember, Kyle Shanahan ain't walking through that door. True. True. <laughs> well, shit, I mean. Uh, it's it's all right. They're the dream team. We'll talk about them in a bit. Um, the way we, fucking we Kyle Shanahan is. Love their way. The way he sells games, man, shit. <laughs> it might be a good thing he's not walking through that door for them. 28-3. Anyway, all right, all right. Yeah, so. Yeah, so we pretty much covered everything, uh, you know. I think, uh, yeah, I can see them. Man, I mean, like, I'm just like you. I'm just like what you said, Sean Payton said. I think y'all just pretty much, y'all have the luxury to pick the best player on the board. You know what I mean? Y'all have, y'all have no immediate needs, you know. It's going to be an interesting draft for, for the Saints, you know. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's going to be, if Sean were to ever trade back, which I just don't think is in his DNA, but maybe he does because there's such an equal value in yeah, terms yeah. of late first, early second guys. Maybe mm-hmm. he trades back for two seconds yeah. from Miami or something. Who knows? But I just don't – I think he's going to fall in love with someone and he's going to go up and get him like he usually does. And then he's going to trade back into the second with a future pick, knowing – now this is important because you can look in the future. We will have quite a few comp picks coming after losing Bridgewater, after losing Von Bell, um, after losing – I'm missing some other people. But we lost a couple of people um, free agent-wise. Uh, and that's the – we haven't had any comp picks in, like, like good 10 years. It's very yeah. strange. Yeah, it's yeah. just the way that we've kind of – we've kind of done business. We're not the Patriots in that way. Right, right. But uh, then again, the Patriots haven't drafted like we have. So I'll trade drafting for rings. But anyway – I, they can have their rings. Um, <laughs> and the, with with that though, I yeah. So thirteen three twelve and four, Super Bowl bust. Blah blah blah. Just just praying that uh, it happens. Right, right. All right, y'all. It's been real. This is the Raising Glaze podcast. Sub for some more pre-draft uh, evaluations of teams and stuff. We have a lot more coming. All right, y'all. Peace. See y'all later.